So I'm going to discuss the argument for whole gland therapy as well. I'm going to discuss focal therapy and then focal brachytherapy. I'm going to discuss what's new, a discussion of the innovations in technology, advances that make us better today, and then the data. So what is the argument for whole gland treatment? We have shown that prostate cancer is heterogeneous, it is multifocal, and the pretreatment volume and disease is significantly underestimated. And some data suggest focal therapy results are like surveillance, except with side effects. Further, whole gland therapy with brachytherapy works well with uncommon severe side effects. Perhaps we um, accelerate ED, and this has been shown by multiple perspective um, studies, Cochrane reviews, and guidelines don't support focal therapy, which has a lot of implications on our daily practice. But finally, the real argument why in my career for 25 years, um, I haven't gone the way of focal therapy is because of the success of surgery. It is the gold standard. And that's the long-standing narrative against our treatment, radiation treatment. That's what it's measured against. And further, it's not accepted in the radon community today. And this is, on the left, is the Kaplan-Meier survival curves from Ascend RT. Mira reviewed this earlier today. But this shows when a seed boost is used versus an IMRT boost, there's profound outcome differences. And I want to just say, this wasn't designed for overall survival or cause-specific survival. It's disingenuous to quote that. And the toxicity is widely underreported in the IMRT arm. And I'll tell you why. They censored men when they failed and did not follow them, follow them for toxicity. And when Mirren and her group looked back at the prevalence of grade three toxicities, it's actually extremely low. Not lower than TRIP, though, and I got to um, acknowledge Dr. Stone, who has trained teams, radiation oncologists, physicists, urologists around the world in these teams in Japan, and then guided them on this trimodality therapy study comparing six months of ADT versus 30 months of ADT. With a medium follow-up of nine years now, all men with high-risk features, just like Ascend IT, there's very low failure rates. And when it comes to radiotherapy, like Dr. Stone said, it's isotoxic. So when you look at our, ra our radon focus, where are we? Is it on very good radiotherapy, where you can't avoid brachytherapy, or is it on failures? So there are many questions, just summarizing what's been said before, surrounding focal therapy. Where's the data? Where's the clinical trials? I've failed to get funded on this several times. Um, people are not interested in primary prostate cancer sometimes. Where's the outcome in toxicity? What's our selection criteria? How do we follow patients? What's the criteria for success and failure? How do we salvage a failure? There's loads and lots of questions. So the arguments further for focal therapy, and I believe this not all disease is multifocal. You've shown where the majority is. That also allows for selection of people that have unifocal disease. And uh, also shown already is Dr. Liu's study in 2009, the index lesion drives metastases and death. It makes sense. Focus on that lesion, you can prevent metastases and death. death. And potentially, it is less toxic. I believe that. So further, it's patient choice. This is all about preserving sexual function for as long as possible. And men do desire minimally invasive and targeted and precise treatment that preserves healthy tissue. And there are innovations and technology advances today that have led to better detection, selection, and targeting. So let's talk about that. And so finally, what about just focal brachytherapy? Stevens reviewed it. But I want to just pick out that there's a known dose response. We've been doing this a long time. And there's a precise record of treatment, and you can see and evaluate a brachytherapy plan for efficacy and safety before, during, and after the treatment. So in my opinion, MRI-based brachytherapy is the most elegant, precise, and efficient focal therapy, highly reliable, and reproducible. So further argument for focal therapy, we have new tools. We have the PSMA PET and the MRI. 
And this is a report of several series on the sensitivity of intraprostatic radiology and its correlation with pathology, showing high sensitivity for PSMA PET, and not for MRI. The specificity for intraprostatic radiology and patho pathologic correlation is high for both. That helps us. And this is the Betterman paper. This is a very important paper correlating histopathology with our imaging findings. And the PSMA PET is more true to the true volume. MRI is not. So PSMA PET is more sensitive. And the studies we've shown of just chasing the MRI finding, it is small. And you can see that on the right. Um, I'm going to show you how I do this. But first, I want to say I always use a PM PMSA PET. I always use an MRI. I call this precise prostate brachytherapy. I also use fiducios that have an MRI signal. Um, the Cirrus signal from C4 Imaging follows my seed, so I can always find my seeds on an MRI forever. I don't use other imaging. And then the Novi MRI markers for IGRT, I place this right in the index lesion. And I also mark around my target of interest, so I can follow this longitudinally. I do this for active surveillance. I do this for focal treatment. I do this for whole gland treatment. So let's see if I can make this work. So this is quick. Let's walk through the treatment planning for an MRI-based focal brachytherapy case. What you see here is the prostate, urethral rectum. You have contours that were automated based on the multiparametric MRI, the PSMA PET scan, and the histology. And I've expanded that to create a PTV. Um, we're going to use 100 gray to this volume using Palladium 103. Um, I'm going to go ahead and place my needles now on where I want to do it. Okay, right now I have 68% coverage. I think I'll be benefited by this. Maybe here. Now I have 91% coverage. I think if I do that, I'm 90. 8.6% coverage with no issue with the rectum or urethra. This is 28 seeds, 12 needles. It will take roughly 10 minutes in the OR. So that's what it looks like. And so let's talk about what we can do. Um, and if we're trying to save sex, you can put the MRI together with your brachytherapy. This is a pilot study done at Emory by my colleague Pratesh Patel investigating neuro vascular bundle avoidance and HDR brachytherapy, basically what it looks like. So, you know, we need to combine these things. You have the PSMA PET for precise targeting of your target, and then you have the multi-parametric MRI to protect neurovascular bundle and to save sex. So with focal brachytherapy, you get this precision, and you see what you're doing. And then further, what's the data? And I'm surprised Stephen didn't bring that up, and that's not a negative comment, believe me. Um, we need data, and this is a meta-analysis done very well. And often people sit up here and say, well, a meta-analysis is to analysis like metaphysics is to physics, but that's not true when done right. And this is a Cochrane-level meta-analysis with strict definitions of endpoints, inclusion, and exclusion criteria. And I'm not going to go through this, but this is many of the studies that have been, uh, that Stephen brought to you. You have a hat to hang on. If you're meeting with a guy and you want to give him options of a focal brachytherapy, here's data. Ten very rigorously scrubbed studies that use the same endpoints for outcome and toxicity. And so this is what I look at when I counsel a guy. And that's, that's there for your reference. So what are the next steps? It's clinical trials, if we can get them going, if we can accrue. With biomarker and molecular imaging endpoints and sexual endpoints. You have this focal brachytherapy. We bring that precision of being able to see it with the PM, PSMA PET and be able to avoid organs at risk with the multiparametric MRI. So conclusions, focal brachytherapy today is widely available. There is a known dose response. And you can see dose relationship to organs at risk, like the neurovascular bundle. 
and it provides a permanent, precise record of what you've done, and there is patient demand. So I'd like to just, my statement is focal brachytherapy is a precise and viable option in carefully selected patients, which can decrease treatment-related side effects, provide durable tumor control, and still allow salvage therapies in the men demonstrating failures. Thank you very much.